My name is Michael Wong, MD. I'm a sports medicine fellowship trained physician at Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group. The fascia iliaca block is a regional nerve block that's typically performed by an anesthesiologist to try to decrease the sensitivity around the hip area or the lower extremity. We've typically used it to treat pain during surgery and around surgery and is typically associated with fracture surgery or hip arthroscopy or minimally invasive surgery about the hip. We had significant motivation to study the effectiveness of the fascia iliaca block around the time of hip arthroscopy because we were doing it routinely and we had multiple patients somewhat complain about their outcomes with the nerve block. So when we went back and looked at the literature behind it, we were somewhat stunned that there wasn't a lot of data or publications that really supported the use of it. So that really initiated a look back for us and a desire to really study it in isolation. We began this part of the study looking at the fascia iliaca nerve block approximately two and a half to three years ago. Um, it takes a lot of time to get everything in place and there are things like IRBs, which are protocols that need to be set in place with certain ethical standards that have to be done before a study can be launched. And there's a lot of review and literature review and committee review in order to get it all set and then it took time to get that protocol in place within the other larger study and then get anesthesia on board, then decide which outcome scores to look at. So from beginning to end, it's taken approximately three years. I'm very thankful to my patients who are very open to participating in research to try to further medicine. Most of my patients understand that hip arthroscopy procedures are still relatively new in the world of orthopedic surgery and they know that we're advancing quite rapidly in terms of our techniques and understanding of the disease processes. In order to look at hip-specific outcomes and, and associated anesthesia outcomes, we had to sit down and really look at what the preoperative fascia iliaca block was trying to accomplish. And for us, it was really trying to see whether or not we were decreasing the amount of narcotics used after surgery and then to see if there are any other side complications associated with the nerve block. The results of our study did actually change the way we approach patients and their pain surrounding surgery. Prior to the study, we routinely recommended the fascia iliaca block for pain control. Now that we know that the morphine equivalent usage is the same, whether or not you get the block or not, our typical protocol is to not perform the fascia iliaca block and to perform the procedure under general anesthesia. That being said, the fascia iliaca, iliaca block is not without its utility. Um, there are still some patients that have significant post-operative pain early on and still benefit from having the block, but now we put it on the back end of surgery instead of at the beginning of surgeries. At my medical school many number of years ago, uh, I was lucky enough to participate with an orthopedic team and they just were outstanding individuals, I thought. I had a great uh, personality match with it, and, and quite honestly, I just thought it was fun and interesting. It's not that I didn't enjoy the other aspects of medicine, but this part really drew me, uh, and so that's what prompted me to go into orthopedic surgery. And I really enjoyed sports medicine. Uh, they were they're young, active people in general, or pa patients of all ages that want to stay active. And the thing that really drew me to sports medicine was the arthroscope, which is the uh, camera that we use to uh, get into joints minimally invasively and it just was remarkable to me the amount of procedures and the degree of finesse that you could achieve with the camera based surgery. The thing I enjoy most about being a surgeon is watching my patients get better. There's nothing better than having a patient come in and say I, I am 90 to 100 percent improved. I'm back doing whatever it is they enjoy. It could be something as simple as uh, gardening, or it could be something as complex as running the Pikes Peak Ascent, which is, you know, a 7,000 foot race up Pikes Peak. Uh, we see patients of all ages, and there's always something that brings them in that they can't do that's interfering with their quality of life. And when we can put together a plan, whether or not it's 
uh, surgical or non-surgical and it gets them back to the things they want to do, it's uh, very rewarding. I, I often hear that from my patients that they were afraid to come in to, to see me or see an orthopedic surgeon. There is some perception that if you're going to see a surgeon, you're just going to end up with a surgery. I love for patients to know that probably 90 to 95 percent of the time we talk to patients about non-surgical management of their particular problem, whether or not it's a tendon problem or a joint problem. Colorado Springs Orthopedic Group is, is very subspecialty based and this is why I've been able to do the research. Most people don't understand that research typically happens at universities and can also happen in private practice, which is our setup. But if you're not part of a subspecialty group like ours, you don't get to really focus in on the, the things that you're passionate about. And the only way to become the expert at that particular area or that subspecialty is to do and live and delve into that subject nonstop. And then that's where the ideas come in that's where the questions are asked and, and that drives looking for answers. As a surgeon in orthopedics and sports medicine in particular, I love being in this Colorado Springs location. Uh, first and foremost, as a recreational athlete, I love having access to the mountains. I love being surrounded by people who share my own interests. But there are these year-round athletes here of all disciplines, including the typical basketball, football, wrestling, soccer, to extreme athletes. We have military athletes and tactical personnel that have injuries as well due to their occupations. And so I'm very thankful to be part of the community and be able to help them stay active and stay working and stay safe.